what's up everybody on today's vlog I'm gonna do some maintenance on the LS got about 101,000 miles usually you do the timing belt about 60 to 90k but you can do it whenever you want just hopefully it doesn't break by the time you decide to do it so I actually did it on my GS way back when I kind of know how to do it but probably forgot some stuff but we'll see and this is pretty critical because you don't want to fuck up your timing there's a lot of information on the internet um, when you're doing this kind of stuff so I'll show you guys when we start doing it I don't think I'm gonna finish it today but we'll see how far we can get because it's not like I'm trying to rush and finish this thing um, I got a lot of time so Let's get into it. All right, first things first, we're gonna jack up the car. You don't need to jack up the car, but I think for me, it's a lot easier. When you're working on it, you're not bending over too much. Take out the under tray, drain the coolant, take out some of the plastics, engine cover, and all that shit, and let's get right into it. All right, we got all the parts. We got like water pump, thermostat, spark plugs, timing belt. You usually don't have to change the idler pulleys, but I like to change them anyways, but they're kind of pricey. It's like 150 bucks for one. We got the valve cover gaskets. These are a must. Kind of a bitch to change but. and i ordered what i thought was the spark plug tube seals where they leak oil into the spark plug tubes but fuck i ordered the wrong one so i gotta go pick that up and i gotta go pick up a crank front crank seal probably some o-rings i don't know if i got all the o-rings but i got some of them the tensioner all oem part i like to order oem just peace of mind i mean you don't have to but and we got the serpentine drive belt yeah, that's about it then we're gonna change oil we gotta go buy coolant too so start ripping this thing apart I'm gonna take out the radiator, intakes, all of this stuff. I like to work when there's a lot of room, that way your shit's not getting in the way. You wanna take out the radiator too because you wanna fuck it up. You're gonna fuck up the fins when you're working down there by the crank pulley and shit, so. But hopefully the radiator's not leaking or anything, so hopefully we don't find any extra leaks that we'll have to end up changing, but. It's pretty dark, but I took out the under tray. We got all of this stuff. Um, when you're taking out connectors, you wanna be careful because they're old and brittle. Like this one right here, I think it's broken already, so you don't want to snap that thing. It won't lock into place, but... Alright, so we're draining the coolant. We got the cover off. Take out these intakes. We got to fend the cover so you don't know, scratch any paint. We got some residue right here, so something's leaking around here. All these evap hoses, usually they tend to crack. You can just replace them with some fucking new hoses, but... All right, let's try to take this radiator out. Disconnect those trans lines. It'll be leaking out fluid the whole time, so you wanna plug the lines. I just put bolts through the lines and then zip tied it. That way it's not leaking everywhere and spewing out fluid. I got the lower radiator hose. Got these two, I think these are 12 mils or 13s, and then the radiator and the shroud should come right out. I think I gotta make a cardboard box to put over this so I don't fuck up this condenser. Next thing, take out the dry belt and then start removing all of this shit. Got the cardboard protector cut out. Automatic tensioner serpentine belt right here, 14 mil. Release the tension, take out the belt. Next thing we're gonna do is take out this throttle body. We're gonna end up cleaning around anyways. They tell you usually not to clean it, but just use like throttle body cleaner. Clean out the edges, cause sometimes carbon builds up and then your car idles like shit. You just clean around these edges. That way the air is able to pass through when you're idling, but vacuum hoses, you gotta take out two coolant hoses and the throttle body should just come out. Throttle body's off. I like to put tape. You can put a rag, but if you forget the rag in there, then you're fucked. So tape is easier. You can just rip it off after before you put it in. Now we're gonna take off this thermostat housing. This thing right there. Should be just these bolts. Maybe there's one underneath. And there's an O-ring. It just pops right out. Make sure you take out this hose. All right, judging by the belt, it looks like they may have done it. Especially because we got like some yellow marks on there. Which I'm assuming they used to mark their timing. But it doesn't look as bad as when I did my GS because over here it was starting to crack. But like I said, we're gonna do it anyways. So let's continue removing all of this. And then we'll go from there. We got both timing covers off. Took this pulley off. It's like a whole bracket right here, but you do have to take out the two compressor bolts. I think there's like four compressor bolts, but just gotta take out the two front ones. That way the bracket comes out. Take out this little bracket right here. These two eight millimeters, and then this whole, I don't know. If, yeah, it goes like this. It just slides right out. Side note, you do have to take the alternator off to get to, I don't know if it was the cover over here. Took out the alternator mounting bolts and then hung it up right here out of the way. Don't need to take out the cables. Thing we're gonna do is spin the engine and try to get these timing marks lined up. After that, we can take out the crank and take out this cover, take out the water pump. These two idler pulleys are the ones that I'm changing. You don't have to. I'm changing them anyway, and then the tensioner is down here. We're gonna rotate clockwise, which is the way the engine spins, so rotating this way. And then you wanna try to line up your timing marks. 
This is the timing mark right there. So you want to have, if I'm not mistaken, there's a mark on the camshaft pulleys. This, this, and this has to line up the crank. So the two marks on the pulleys and the crank has to line up. So you just keep spinning until they all line up, which they should. I mean, I think they should because it looks like someone did this timing belt. So hopefully they timed it correctly. Yeah, you just keep going. See, because this is on zero right now on the crank, but then there's no timing marks lined up on the cam. So you just want to keep going. When you do this, uh, make sure everything lines up. But the thing gets confusing when there's two positions on the cam side. Here, check this out. It's lined up with this right here. And then there's a groove on the cam here. If you can see it right there too. So these are all lined up. That means it's timed correctly. This is the other side, zero. So everything's lined up. But I thought it was lined up on this one. But this is for 50 degrees after top dead center from what I read. And the pin over here is 50 degrees top dead center too. There's a pin on this housing cover. They want you to, when you remove it, turn it to 50 degrees. So this is gonna line up with the pin. It's gonna line up with that. T mark. The reason for that is when you release the tensioner, there's no um, tension on the valve springs or the cam gears or anything because usually there's tension on the cam because of the valve springs are putting pressure on the cam and then sometimes it'll snap the cam out of place. Put it to 50 degrees after TDC on those T marks on the cam and that pin on the crank. Everything's released. You take out the belt, you put the new one on, and you release the tensioner. It won't snap the cams or anything, so just be in place. And then you can crank that thing again and see if it lines up. So that's pretty much it for today. I got it lined up pretty fast. Maybe it took me like a couple hours to get to torn down, but I'm gonna wait part two because I gotta go get the front crank seal, which I don't have, and then a crank bolt. It doesn't look like it's leaking, but I'll change it anyway since I'm already down there. So that's usually what I do. For the most part, that's it. Pretty simple. Um, you can easily finish this job in like four or six hours if you reuse some stuff or if you're just changing the timing belt and water pump. That's it for today, guys. So catch you guys in part two. Welcome back. We went to Lexus this morning, <clears throat> picked up some more stuff. We got the spark plug tube seals, crank seal, we got some gasket maker, and we got a throttle body gasket. I had to buy OEM stuff, but these cars could run for a while, so I like to put some good quality parts on them. If you're freaking trying to get rid of the car later down the line, or you don't give a shit, then you can always put like some aftermarket stuff. But me, just a peace of mind, I always put like to put OEM stuff. Costs a little more, but I think it's worth it in the long run. So we're gonna continue this thing. We got this thing timed, like I said yesterday, and then we're gonna move it 50 degrees, I think. That's what online is saying. There's a lot of information online, so if you ever get stuck, there's so much information online you can look for. And then we're gonna remove the crank pulley and the timing belt and then we're gonna slap the new one on. So let's get busy. They didn't have the crank bolt in stock. I think I'm gonna just reuse this one. Usually you wanna change it. I think the book says you gotta change it, but I think I'm gonna reuse this one. So we're gonna do, use the tool, courtesy of CM, to hold the crank while we crack this crank bolt. <laughs> All right, we got it. And crank pulleys out, but we'll take out this last cover, close the whole timing belt assembly, and then take out the tensioner, and the timing belt should come right off. The whole timing belt assembly. Next thing we're gonna do is release the tensioner, and the timing belt should flop. So we got the new water pump in. There's the O ring right here, don't forget that to change that. Should come with the kit. There's eight bolts one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Give it a little tap, it should pop right out. Did have a little hard time coming out. I had to like give it a good tap because it's a mated surface, so it's on there good. So got the new gasket, new water pump in, new O-ring, so we're gonna torque this thing a spec. All right, we just torqued all the bolts on the water pump. Should be good. I'll work on the crank seal, get that taken out, and I put the new one in the old crank seal out as you can see I just use the OTC crank puller comes in that set right there pretty much use it like a puller if you've ever used a puller before but pretty simple try not to scratch the crank last thing you want to do is make some big ass gouges in the crank then you end up leaking oil and it won't seal we're gonna install the new one and then continue all right that's the installation setup you just use the crank bolt and then the OTC tool adapters to push the seal in flush I just installed the new idler pulleys crank uh, gear back on and we're gonna put the belt back on. Alright we got the belt on. The easiest way is to put this on first, put the crank on next, put this on, slide it right onto this pulley. So I'm gonna put the tensioner, pull the pin, and then rotate the engine and see if everything lines up. Alright we got everything where we need it to be so we can check timing. I'm gonna rotate the crank now, put a pin on the tensioner. Focus on the 
and then we'll see hopefully everything lines up it'll probably take like a few turns to rotate the whole assembly one time to get everything lined back up we'll see it looks good to go here's a tip you know when you're lining up you're originally lining up the pins so when you remove the belt i had this r cam label on the right cam and then the left cam on the left cam and then the crank so don't pay attention to that after you start rotating it you're, what you're going to want to look at is the marks on the actual gear there's a mark right here and line it up with the cover same as this one and then the crank is on zero so if you keep rotating it you're probably gonna have to rotate it like four times in order for the markings where it says right cam on top the um, right cam and then the left cam on the left cam probably gonna have to rotate it like four times because originally when you took the belt off it was at um, cylinder one top dead center but then you're gonna keep rotating it go through all the cylinders and then you're back at one again that's the only time it's gonna line up again the label on the belt the original markings the r cam l cam and stuff like that but as long as your tank is at zero and then your cams are lined up with your tiny marks and it should be good to go i think what we're gonna do is put everything back i gotta torque down the cover torque down the bolt the crank bolt and then that's it let's start putting everything back all right we got the setup to torque the crank bolt down 181 foot pounds if you're curious we're gonna hold this and then torque it down baby you guys we're making progress so put this cover on got the alternator secure put this ender pulley on you want to spin your pulleys and make sure they're not making any noise. This one's kind of noisy, but I'm going to change it later on. It's not that, as bad right now. If you got the money, then you may as well change it. Yeah, I don't feel like spending. It's probably like a couple hundred bucks for this pulley if you go OEM, but I usually like to put anti-seize on all my bolts. So it's not seized up when you're taking it back out, but if you do later on, just double check that these go back in sequence. Like this goes first and then the alternator. And then you got to kind of slip this cover in while you're putting this in, but yeah. We're almost there. Got the covers back on. We're gonna work on this thermostat housing assembly. You gotta clean this off. Mine's had RTV on it, so I ended up buying that Toyota one. I don't know if there's an actual gasket for it. I didn't bother looking, but I don't know if whoever did it before. Looks like they just put RTV, so I bought the Toyota one. I'm gonna put it in here and then replace this O-ring right here and slap it back on. Should go right here. After that, we put the throttle body on and then we're almost ready to wrap this thing up. I may or may not do the spark plug and valve cover gaskets um, today because I gotta go somewhere. So kind of running out of time, but I don't want to rush anything or else I'm going to end up forgetting or fucking something up. So let's get this thermostat housing on and then we'll go from there. All right, we got it on and torqued. Next thing we're going to do is change the thermostat. I was going to do it when it was outside, but I figured it'd be easier to do it when it's mounted on like this. Out the pin um, right here. Put it in the way it came out. So say there's a specific orientation, you gotta note that pin right there. But I don't know. All right, guys, we made it as far as that. Putting on the throttle body. I could easily slap in the radiator and stuff, but I'm gonna save it for tomorrow when I do the valve cover gasket. So this is the end of part two. We'll see you guys tomorrow. This is part three of this Lexus maintenance repair. No, maintenance before mods. Today we're gonna finish this thing up. Hopefully it goes as smooth as planned, but all we got left is to reinstall the radiator, reinstall the hose, some hoses and stuff, and then change the oil and then do the valve cover gaskets and the spark plug two seals and change the spark plugs. But I think the valve cover gaskets are gonna be a little hard only because the wiring and all that shit is in the way. I'm trying to remove that whole assembly without taking out too much stuff, but we'll see i did on my gs before from what i remember it was kind of hard especially the spark plug twos because you gotta bend like tabs got the old gas yet and then put the new one in but i'll show you guys when we start putting it together but yeah let's get this radiator in i'm gonna clean it up a little bit because there's like dirt debris blocking away and then before i put in the intake and stuff i'll start doing the valve cover gas yet so Let's get this day started. All right, so here we are again. Everything below here is hopefully plugged in. Start to spec. Oh, everything's back mounted up. And then I'm gonna start draining the engine oil while I do the valve covers. That way I can just do multiple things at once. Um, I had changed the oil anyways. My maintenance light was on. Looks like this side is gonna be easier. Passenger side, because there's not much stuff compared to this side. All of this shit. ECM harness. So. All right, we almost forgot to put the drive belt back on. It would have been easier without the radiator, but we can still get it. If you forget how it goes on, there's a diagram right here. 
All right, belt's back on. Just want to make sure you have it routed correctly. Double check with the diagram and make sure that it's seated correctly within the grooves of the pulleys or else then your belt is going to fly right off when you start it up or it'll shred your belt when you're going down the road and you don't want that. So, good to go. All right, we got the oil draining. We got the radiator pretty much in. Plugs back in. Cooling hose is hooked up. The trans cooler line's hooked up. Next thing we're gonna do is start on the valve cover. Like I said, we're gonna do the passenger side first because this seems a little bit easier. Move on to the driver's side, which I know is gonna be a bitch, but this one looks not too bad, so let's get started. You gotta watch out for these spark plug coil connectors because they tend to break because they're so old and it's plastic. I'm probably gonna break a few, but just be careful and try not to break them, but uh, what can you do? So grip it till it I know just what you need. Next thing we're gonna do is take out the coils, the 10 millimeter, and then just put them back where they came off of. All right, we got it out. It was kind of a bitch, but it's out. But they do look like they've been replaced. That's probably why I don't smell it leaking. Usually around 100,000 miles, they end up leaking. And the tube seals were definitely replaced because I don't think this color is OEM, so check it out. This is it right here. Um, you gotta bend these four tabs back and then put the new tube seals in and then press them back in, so. It's the valve cover gasket. We're gonna get that taken care of real quick, clean everything up, and then put it back. Let's do the other side, but it was kind of a bitch. A little bit tight, but uh, not too bad. I think the other side is gonna be worse, like I said, but we'll see. All right, this is how I'm doing this thing. I'm just bending these tabs up. I'm back with the pliers. Alright guys, we almost had it, but I fucked it up. Supposed to have the beveled side of the tube seals facing towards the engine. So here, check it out. I had it the way I had it and saw it and how it's supposed to be. This is correct. Wrong. So that was my fault because I wasn't paying attention when I was removing it. Plus the thing was protruding out and it wasn't seating all the way so I was like damn what the fuck but then when I went to go put it in the engine it didn't slide over the um, spark plug tubes and that's where you know you fucked up I'm gonna fix this whole thing and then we'll get it back in all right guys we got it in torque to spec next thing we're gonna do is spark plugs we got these NGK ruthenium's and it's the one above iridium's the newer ones so we'll see if they do good but plugs will probably change if they did everything else they'll pro they probably change the plugs too but we're gonna do them anyways like I said because we bought everything already so pretty easy just fucking get a spark plug socket go down in there change them out yeah we're gonna get that done real quick and then we're gonna start on the other side all right we got this side buttoned up change the plugs put everything back the connector wise double so checked if i plugged everything back in we've got the air box in plan them in yeah i could probably put this back in the intake piping but i'll just leave it off for now but now we're gonna start on the other side looks like we're gonna have to take out this take this shit off disconnect it from these clamps right here and then pull it off set it on the side then the harness is in the way so we're gonna have to take off this bolt and then try push it out of the way and then fuck there's the dipstick and then these fuel lines damn this shit's gonna be tight all right guys we got the other side done to be honest it was a bit pissing me off a little because it was a little bit tighter like i said and i knew it would be but yeah we finished it up yeah change the plugs everything uh, i had to go run to o'reilly's real quick because I had to buy a PCV hose that broke. It's because it's all brittle. So I just bought a new PCV hose and then I'm gonna just cut it to length. It just runs right there. And then it goes to that fucking intake ram. But yeah, I already filled the engine oil. Tried to fill the coolant. Just gonna let it run and then top it off while it's running. I'm gonna put this intake manifold back and try to start it up and see how it runs. Hopefully there's no leaks and hopefully it runs good. Everything is pretty much together except this plenum because I can't get to the hole. Shoot everything down underneath and make sure it's nice and clean. And then I'll probably put the under tray, but it's probably best to leave the under tray out. That way you can see if there's any leaks dripping on the ground, but I'll just put it on anyway. Wish me luck. All right, just want to make sure and double check everything's plugged in. All the hoses are connected. Don't want to have to do this shit over again. Maybe there's a coolant leak or something and you're wasting coolant. So, oh, we're going to try to start it up. Hopefully it goes good. All right, here we go. Like 
right here. Fuck. I'll fix that real quick. Wait. My technique is gone. I just had to push the hose all the way in. But I'm probably gonna have to replace this hose too because it's fucking crap. Seems like it's running good. We're gonna back it out a little bit and let it run, let it idle. Double check for any leaks. Gonna top off the cooling and stuff. Seems to be running pretty good. There's no lights or anything on right now as of yet. Gonna let it run for a little while. Turn on the heater. That way the coolant can circulate throughout the whole coolant system, including the heater inside the evap and stuff. But he's running pretty smooth. I don't feel any misfires or anything, which is a good thing. Um, if the timing was fucked up, you'd, you'd know right off the bat. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's any leaks or anything, so. All right, it's running pretty good. No lights, no leaks. It got to operating temp. I gave it a couple revs, it's pretty good. Check it out. Smooth, baby. Well, that should be it for this maintenance repair on this LS430. There's the timing belt, the front crank seal, valve cover gasket, spark plug tube seals, spark plugs, and then replace the tensioner, timing belt tensioner, and idler pulleys, some of that stuff. Replace the drive belt. It's regular maintenance for these cars. Um, wasn't really a how-to, but just uh, watch me do my timing belt logs. I didn't really explain every single thing. It's pretty simple if you know what you're doing. There's a lot of information on the internet too, so if you get stuck, you can always look stuff up on like Club Lexus forums and stuff like that. But that's it for this vlog. Hopefully in the next vlog we can get some mods, slap the SSRs on on the GS and see where we're at. But stay tuned guys. You know, see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Liars, cheaters, non-believers, rot into the bone.